but they were scared. They were scared of their freedom. They didn't want to leave, but they wanted it. So could you imagine, well, actually, Pastor Dell, did you know that eagles build their nests higher than any other birds in the world? So these little baby birds, when it's time for them to get kicked out of the nest and fly, they're probably up in these nests looking down at the ground. Well, actually, they're, they're probably looking down on top of a cloud. And they're looking down, and they're looking back at the mama bird, and they're like, I ain't going to be able to do it. They're scared to jump, you know what I mean? So mama bird's like, you got to go. So these little guys are falling, tumbling, rolling all the way down, thinking they're going to die. So they're flapping their little bitty old wings, you know, and they're going all the way down. And right before they hit the ground, here comes that mama eagle just flying in, and they land right on her back. And she just flies that little bird to safety, and she just carrying them on the wings of an eagle. And that's just exactly what God is telling Moses. I carried you all the way out of Egypt through the desert on eagle's wings. And God tells you this all the way throughout the text of the Bible. I'm carrying you on the wings of eagles. So and, and don't you think he does that today in our lives? I mean, we're in, we're in our nets. We're in our comfort zones. And sometimes we don't want to leave that nest. We're too scared. And But when we do, sometimes things don't go the way we want them to go. But God carries us on the wings of eagles. Amen. Now in verse 5 it says, Now if you obey me fully and you keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession, although the whole earth is mine. Don't you find that awesome? God owns the whole earth. Not only that, but the entire universe was spoken into existence in a moment's notice. That's a pretty powerful God. Amen. And do you know that and there's actually even other versions of the Bible that talk about the Israelites becoming a peculiar people or set apart, set apart person, people, group of people. So the thing of it is, though, it's an if. If you obey me, then. It's almost like my children when they're arguing over, well, if you do this for me, then I'll do this for you. Have you ever seen children kind of go through that? But this is on a much grander scale because God is not messing around. Our law, our Lord... <coughs> does not mess around. He is holy. God is holy. He's sovereign. He is to be reverenced. And we need to not forget that. That same God is the same God now. Though he's still holy. So in verse 6 it says, You will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. So guess what? The word priest means mediator. Anybody in here probably been to another kind of church that has a priest in it? The word priest really just means a middle person. Someone who's in the middle of a, to give you a message, like a messenger. So, uh, in this particular story, Moses is like the priest. He's the mediator. Um, and, and it goes on to say, in verse 7 through 9, So Moses went back down. So he went up the mountain, now he's coming down again summoned to the elders of the people and set before them the words of the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people all responded together, We will do everything the Lord has said. Amen. So Moses brought their answer back to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, I'm going to come to you in a dense cloud so that the people will hear me speaking with you and will always put their trust in you. Then Moses told the Lord what the people had said. You know, when he talks about a priesthood, He's talking about evangelism. He's talking about us to go out and be the priests, in a very general sense, to our communities. If Moses is the mediator in this particular story, we cannot help but reference Jesus Christ, who is our mediator. And actually, it's like a prophecy here. If you see that there's a, here's Moses on this mountain talking to the Father. Well, didn't Jesus come from the Father and spoke to the Father on our behalf? Isn't he our mediator? He brings us salvation. He brings us that intimate relationship with, with God. Well, you're all called to be evangelists. And can I get everybody to do me a favor? Everybody look down at their feet for one second. Just seriously, look down at your feet. And the word says, And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. Amen. Now, you all have beautiful feet. I want pretty feet. My wife won't tell me I do, but I'm telling you, you all have beautiful feet. And here at Wildwood United Methodist Church, we have an evangelism team. And I don't know who, run, who runs that evangelism I don't know, team. I have a clue. No clue. Some wonderful people. I think Greg and Nicole Penny. 
Bennington? Yeah, that's 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 great that's folks. That's but anyway, I think you guys need to get involved with that because we get to go out into the community, we get to pray with people, we put hands on people. It's just a wonderful, wonderful um, experience. And um, I think there's some folks in here that go out with us and do it, so give well, us that Kathy and Mickey came out last time. We were so pleasantly surprised when oh. they showed up. We were like, are you here for the evangelism team? Yes. yes and it was and awesome. we had the best time. We traveled like in a posse down the road, and people couldn't help but say, what are those people doing? We were witnessing to people with lawnmowers and, yeah. and talking to children and yeah. people on their porches. It was really fun. It's a serious Jesus freak. It was yeah. really awesome. Amen. It was wonderful. Amen. Because, you know, the, the community needs to see that we care about what they need. And this community has a lot of needs. We have our food pantry. Thank God for that. And it reaches out and feeds a lot of people. But we need to uh. meet their needs emotionally, too. That they need to know that this church has been here a really long time. You know, some people don't even know this church exists in this neighborhood. I think that's silly. We have got to go out and tell them, hey, these people are different. We care. So I think that that's what's awesome. And I think it's the weekend of November 16th. Right. So all, you, going out again. So all you beautiful, feeded people <laughs> who are evangelists. Beautiful footed, I think. So, yes. Right. I stand corrected. Thank you. Footed, I think. If you want to go ahead and go to the mountain picture, that'd be good. Okay. And go to verse 10. Um, right. Well, actually, I'm going to say here that um, the Hebrews originally are as God's chosen people. Everyone ever heard that before? Well, do you remember when um, you know Jesus came? Jesus came because the Israelites actually didn't listen. Because it is almost impossible to be completely obedient all the time. Can I get an amen? Amen. Yeah, I can say amen with two hands. But um, God is merciful. So he sent Jesus down as our mediator, because we cannot simply obey all the time. So he gave us his grace through the blood of Christ, and he is now our mediator. So when God talks to us, he sees the blood of Jesus over us. So we are good in his sight, and he can hear from us. So um, actually in um, Romans 11 it says, For God spared not the natural branches. Take heed, he also spared thee not as well. The natural branches is the Israelites. And then we are intertwined in the vine because the Israelites didn't obey. They're still God's people, but so are you. So are you. Yeah. <clears throat> Verse 10 to 15. I'll go ahead and read that. It says, And the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and be ready by the third day, because on that day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. Put limits around for all the people around the mountain and tell them, be careful that you do not go up to the mountain or touch the foot of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall surely die. He shall surely be stoned or shot with arrows. Not a hand is to be laid on him, whether man or animal, he shall not be permitted to live. Only when the ram's horn sounds a long blast may go up to the mountain. After Moses had gone down to the mountain to the people, he consecrated them, and they washed their clothes. Then he said to the people, prepare yourselves for the third day of same and sexual relations. Now, going back up to verse 10, I can see how the Israelites, well, Moses is running up and down this mountain, um, relaying these messages, messages from God to the Israelites. Now, I can only imagine being in this group of Israelites and getting these messages relayed from Moses and thinking to myself, wow, you know, here's Moses telling us we got to consecrate ourselves um, because we're going to meet the Alpha, the Omega, the, the Most High, God. God's going to come speak to us. So I, got, I must wash myself, wash my clothes, you know, get real prettied up because I'm about to see God and speak to God. This is awesome. Now, if it were me, I would be like my wife on her wedding day. I would go down to the salon all day. I would go get one of them mud baths, get that green stuff on my face. I mean, I've never done this. Get my nails did, get my toenails did. You're in church, right? Get my hair did. Tell the truth. <laughs> Tell the truth. Okay, maybe once, but that was on my wedding day. That was on my wedding day, too. But, um, you know, actually, I'm going to script, I'm going to jump over to yeah, Hebrews. Change the subject. Okay. Amen. In Hebrews 10, verse 19, I'm just kidding. Um, verse 19, it's a call to persevere. It says, therefore, brothers, 
since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by blood of, by the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body. Now, back then, they didn't have that. Um, you know, Moses was kind of like the mediator, which Nicole was talking about. But we now have a redeemer. We have Jesus who, who died on that cross. You know, it's, it's by the blood of Jesus that we are sanctified. Um, we can come to the altar. It's, we can take that daily inventory. We can come to the altar. Well, my altar is sometimes in the front seat of the car, driving down the road. It's at the foot of my bed. It's um, at the dinner table. It's, it's wherever. It's, it's the spiritual cleansing. It's just not the, the cleansing of the, the physical cleansing, like it's saying in, in, in this uh, text here. But it's, it can also be the spiritual cleansing of taking that daily inventory. Amen. Could you have them change the picture to the mountain photo, please? Okay, so in verse 15, uh, 16 it says, On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning, and with a thick cloud over the mountain, a very loud trump blast. Everyone in the camp trembled. Then Moses led the people out of the camp to meet God. They stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke, because the Lord descended on it in fire. The smoke billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace, and the whole mountain trembled violently. And the sound of a trump grew louder and louder. Then Moses spoke, and the voice of God answered him back. The Lord descended to the top of Mount Sinai and called Moses to the top of the mountain. So Moses went up, and the Lord said to him, Go down and warn the people, so they do not force their way up through to see the Lord, and many of them will perish. Even the priests who approach the Lord must consecrate themselves or the Lord will break out against them. Moses said to the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai because you yourself warned us to put limits around the mountain and to set it apart as holy. The Lord replied, Go down and bring Aaron up with you. But the priests and the people must not force their way up through to come up to the Lord, or he will break out against them. So Moses went down as the people, as he was told. You know, on this photo here, I saw several pictures online. I was really looking for something. Isn't this awesome? Can you imagine? There's hundreds of thousands of Israelites here. Can you imagine being in a crowd like that? That'd be really fun. <coughs> and here they are, waiting for one man to come down and tell them all these messages. They probably couldn't even hear him. They were probably, oh, Moses said, Moses said. But I know they heard the trump of God. Yeah. And do you know that many, actually, I was reading um, different commentaries and stuff. This also kind of foreshadows the second coming of Christ with the trumpet sound of the archangel. But really, it's not a trumpet. Really, according to these scholars, the trump sound is the sound the trumpet makes. And that's actually God's voice sounds like a trump. I cannot imagine how humbling that would be to have that trump going off as loud as it had to go with fire coming, smoke. I imagine they got pretty reverent pretty quickly. So, it's the morning of the third day. So it's the third month of the third day when this occurs. <clears throat> These are the same people that, like Greg had said earlier, were afraid to leave Egypt, were really kind of complacent in their slavery, wanted freedom but didn't want pain. Same people that made a big old mess of things. I don't know about you, but there's still, I still make a mess of things. There's, things, there's times that I think I know everything. I don't. The one thing I know for sure is I don't know everything. That's what I know for sure. Um, but these are the same people that made a big mess by trying to take things in their own strength and do them on their own. Now here they are being reminded that the same God that gave them manna and quail and guarded them with the clouds so they would not be scorched during the day. It's the same God. And we serve that same Father God now. We see that God protected them he fed them. He's giving them a way out of slavery. God has given us a way out of slavery through his sanctified blood. So we no longer have to consecrate like Greg had said physically, but spiritually we're consecrated by the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That the, the veil was torn in two when he was crucified. 
Amen. That's a pretty awesome picture. If you can imagine that in the priest's Holy of Holies, only the priest could go once a year. And that Holy of Holies was set apart. And you know that they used to have bells on the bottom of their skirt in case they died. They would just pull out the, the priest. They would listen for the bells, and if the bells would stop ringing, they would just drag them out. We don't need that anymore. Hallelujah. We have a way to the Father through an intimate relationship by the consecrated, sanctified blood of Jesus. So here at this time, they're speaking to God through this cloud. We can speak to God right here. We don't need a cloud. You know what I think is also awesome? Is that God actually does appear in this cloud form. So I was praying about it. I was on my porch the other day, and I was really praying. I said, Lord, why did you come in the cloud all the time? This cloud repeats itself over and over again. And I heard in my spirit the Lord say to me, because I'm living water. And so what is a cloud? It's condensed water. And he had not yet revealed himself to the people. So I give God praise for that. That he is the living water and he, he'll never thirst again once you have Jesus. Amen. Giving you that living water every day during your daily inventory, during your prayers, during your silence. God knows what you need. So once again, on the second coming, guess what he's coming back in? He'll be coming around the mountain. In a cloud. <laughs> Shocking, right? God seems to repeat himself in the Bible. Mountains, clouds. Some numbers repeat themselves. It's all a mystery, and we'll never know the answers to all things in this life. If we try to seek that we'll find all the answers, we're going to be very disappointed. It takes faith of a mustard seed, little tiny faith, but that he is coming back, coming back for his church, and we are supposed to be holy, because God is holy. We're to be ready, and we're to be the priest of a priesthood. We're the evangelists of now, and you are called. You know that many are called, but few are chosen. I'm going to be uh, pretty confident to say you're chosen. You're here. You're the chosen. Here we are. So what are we going to do about it? Are you going to be there at the next evangelism team? No. If not, you can just pray for us. Because you always need a prayer to set you out on your right way. So, are we coming around the mountain? <laughs> are you ready?